Right, so this is next board Taiwan and we're starting up a new game. Start up the new game for a couple of reasons and I'm using the same parameters as the previous scenario. I'm gonna do a couple things different though. The reason I'm resetting is I forgot the rule that limits the amount of intake that each port can, uh, can transfer from the mainland or from port to port for that matter. You can only take, or they can only receive two stacking points per turn and that's why I have way too many Chinese forces coming over way too quick. So I've already played one whole turn and about halfway through the second turn. And what I'm doing differently this time around is I'm using the alternate advanced air rules that came as a part of supplement number one. So this is the supplement that gives you the cyber warfare rules, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. I mean, it, it does some cool things, but uh, there's some things I don't like about it. It's one of those... Things, and I'm not sure it's worth the extra weight for what it adds to the game, I guess is what I could say. It also adds the submarine rules, which I've never tried. So there's two sets of rules in there I've never tried, and so we're going to be using those, as well as the random events. So we'll be using the random events as well. So far, nothing of note has happened on that front. So how do these, um, how do these things work? So in the advanced, the alternate advanced air rules, you have these tokens that are going to be uh, masked on one side and on the other side it's got the values and basically there's no differentiation between aircraft types. The idea is each of these constitutes a strike package. The letter up in the upper left hand corner is either going to be an Alpha or a Bravo, A or B. Number in the upper right is its air defense rating. Number in the lower left is its close support. No, lower right is its strike rating. So in a lot of ways it's a hybrid between the standard game's very abstract rules and the advanced game, which has uh, much more detailed rules for air-to-air -air combat, strikes, and so forth. Here's my problem with the advanced game air rules. Now, first of all, I'll, I'll say this. I like those rules. And I say nine out of ten times, I would probably go ahead and use them. This is the first time I played with the advanced alternate. It's kind of growing on me a little bit, but here's my problem with the advanced air rules as they are written. It tries to blend detail with abstraction, and sometimes it, it tries to be super detailed, and other times it tries to be abstract, and it's trying to live in both worlds, and I don't think it can quite do that. My biggest issue is the theater of air combat is abstracted on this display, and it's difficult to know where, where are these planes actually flying from. Well, they're not flying from any particular air bases across this island or other locations, and so you kind of abstract out the air ranges and so forth. But you can end up with some kind of weird results in the advanced game where you got B-52s getting intercepted, which probably wouldn't happen in a real life scenario. You know, Air, air Command wouldn't let them go into um, a, a situation where they could be intercepted without, um, you know, escorts. And, and so this game can actually produce some, some strange results that seem improbable. And so that's that's my issue with it. It does take more time to play. You got to roll out all those air to air uh, combat situations, so it can cause the game to take quite a bit longer to play. That's not inconsequential. So, in the advanced game or the advanced alternate air rules, what you have is you have a selection cup with a randomized, huge randomized mix of alpha tokens and Bravo strike package tokens. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually use the standard game, I'm trying to find the chart here, standard game air points chart. And you're going to be using this table and you cross index the, the turn number with a die roll and that determines how many strikes each side is going to get. The aggressor is on the left, the uh, defender is going to be on the right, and it's keyed to the particular game that you're playing. So obviously the, the PRC is going to get way more strikes early on, but that's going to start to fall off towards the end of the game. So this determines how many alpha strike packages you, you pull and how many bravo strike packages you pull out of the selection cup. Once you pull them out, you put them in a selection cup where they're going to be randomly drawn as needed during the course of the turn. And from this cup, they're going to be reduced based on the number of airfields that are destroyed, air bases destroyed, bases that have strike markers on them, and so forth. Who wins air superiority is based on the differential between the number of tokens in each uh, final selection cup. So this actually 
in gameplay, I mean, I've only gone through one turn, one and a half turns. It feels like it's giving me a more accurate picture than the sometimes more contrived but more flavorful advanced game. So, and, and it does play a bit faster. So I'll shoot some videos and kind of show you how these things work. Uh, the biggest issue is to remember what all the, the numeric values are. The upper right hand corner, it's gonna be a defensive modifier that you're gonna use uh, whenever you uh, are, are rolling in a strike on something, you're going to look at the air defense fire table here, and the result of your die roll is going to be compared to that air defense value on the strike package marker, and that's going to give you, uh, either it's going to allow the strike to proceed with a favorable die roll modifier, no die roll modifier, or a negative die roll modifier. It can even be returned to the, uh, the, the available cup or back to... Uh, uh, the turn track for selection in future reinforcements. They can also be removed from the game as collateral damage is rolled out on um, basis. So eventually these cups are going to get emptied and you're going to have fewer and fewer of these things to pull. So the weight of air-to-air of, uh, -air combat is going to start to tell as the game progress. Whenever you roll in the strike, the strike value in the lower right hand corner is going to be used on the strike table and it works just like it normally would in the advanced game. Close support is a modifier for combat purposes. That's the number on the lower left and it works just like in the advanced game. So the only thing I'm doing differently than what Mitch has written down, you don't use the air defense track so you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, one thing I am doing differently is there is a modifier for the air defense in the alternate error system rules, where if you're within two hexes of a uh, of an of a headquarters, there's a modifier that's going to help the uh, the interceptor, and it's going to be harder on the strike package. I'm going to increase that by plus one. I'm adding an additional modifier if you are within range of naval forces offshore, or the S three hundred, S four hundred, or Patriot missile batteries. So I'm going to add those missile batteries to the um, alternate air system ADF tables. So that's the only change I'm making from Mitch's system. And it seems to be working quite well. A lot of these strikes are ineffective. You're gonna, seems like you're pulling more strikes, but a lot of them are gonna be nerfed because there's different values on all of these things. And some of them have great values, but then they're more uh, liable to the ADF. And, uh, and so they, they end up not doing much of anything for you. And so these things roll out really quick. It seems like it works a lot faster than the normal advanced game air rules. So that's what I'm doing with that. Uh, I can't tell you a whole lot about the submarines yet because I haven't really used them a whole lot yet, but they can be used to uh, influence the, the die roll for control of these sea zones. They can attack uh, naval vessels. We did have one Taiwanese diesel submarine make an attack. It, was, it failed and then the sub was killed by the subsequent, uh, you have to make a survival die roll after that and the, um, the submarine was killed. And so that was un unfortunate for them. So they're down one boat, but some of these are face down and some of them are real, some are dummies. This is where it won't play as well solitaire, but I'm just kind of checking the rules out, see how they work, uh, just for my own curiosity's sake. So that's what we're doing here. The initial landings in this game, we'll just give you the rundown, have gone pretty well. I, I landed pretty much in the same area. I landed a little bit further down shore just to avoid the mines. I felt like I got lucky last time with mines. The clearing die rolls for the city hexes here and here went off without a hitch. This one, they drew a nasty one. So to get that port and that air base, they might be working at that for a few turns. So that's going to be a bottleneck. So I've been using a lot of the strike packages to slow down the arrival of reinforcements into the theater. There was a counterattack against the airborne mech unit and they got beat up pretty bad, but strike packages went to work on the air brigade or the armor brigade, blew up a bridge there, which threw all these guys out of supply. And so that's, that's going to help the, um, the Western Northwestern flank of the PRC beachhead. So that's the situation at the present time. Biggest mistake I made with Taiwan is I tried to, I tried something I'd never done before. I positioned guys right on the beaches and ended up losing a lot of brigades early. I lost three infantry brigades right away. I almost feel like that's just doomed to fail. And might have been better, sir, putting them into a place where 
you know, they're, they're a little bit more defensible. Like in these urban areas, those infantry are going to be sorely missed. So overall, similar scenario to what we had going on in game one, but with a little bit different circumstances. Big blow to the Taiwanese. They did lose their Apaches on, due to collateral damage on a ridiculously lucky die roll. Uh, rolled two ones for collateral damage and knocked out the Apaches that were based down here. These guys are still intact. However, they haven't been able to do a whole lot because of the way air defense works in the uh, in this particular system. It's a little bit harder for these guys to uh, gain access to the battlefield without being influenced by air defense fire. So they haven't been as effective. And so far, the strike packages have not been able to get through and impart any meaningful support to the defenders yet. But that's probably going to start to change as the Allies are going to get more of these markers and uh, start using them in different ways as I learn the system more. So that's the next war, Taiwan, game number two, turn number two, using the alternate air system.